All right, so this is our In Innovators Dilemma chart by Clay and Christensen. Explains a whole host of things. As uh, Clayton explained in the video, it explains steamships, the, uh, wiping out the sailing ships. Um, I don't think he explained backhoes, but it in the book that he wrote, it does that. But here's the deal. We're actually going to do... Um, well, let's talk about Microsoft. A great example of how Microsoft got killed. And then maybe we'll talk about Apple as well. Um, so let's talk about Microsoft first, though. So let's erase this. Take these out of here. All right. And let's talk about the operating system, the Windows operating system. And so I don't know how far we need to go back, but uh, it came out. Uh, the Windows operating system came out in, what, 89? I think it was five months later, 1990. That's when it came out, the first one. And I can't remember if it was Windows 3. Let's call it 3. And then we had, I think there was Windows 93. I'm guessing a little at some of these. Uh, 98. Pretty sure there was a 98. There was a 2000. Uh, at some point we had XP. And we had, I think, 2008. And I think we're up to 2013 right now. And so actually, let's talk about these when it comes uh, let's talk about these when it comes to Excel and Word. It's pretty much the same version. So it would be Word 3.0, Word 93, 98, 2000, Word XP, 2008, 2013. I think we're kind of in the Windows 10 version uh, right now. But nonetheless, these are all Word and Excel versions right there. All right, so then a disruptive company comes along. And which company is it? It's Google. So, it releases its first product. Do you remember what its first product was? Google's about 15 years old, maybe more, but its first product was Search. And just as Clayton Christensen kind of described in his video is, a disruptive innovation will come along and it will enter the market space in a completely different area from the mainstream Thing or innovation or technology that's going on. And sure enough, search is not Excel and it's not Word, right? And so Microsoft's not worried about this thing called search. After search, Google came out with, let's say, Gmail. And I may be a little bit wrong on the exact profile of what's going on here, but it, it works pretty well. Gmail comes out. Does Microsoft Word care about that? No. Does Microsoft Excel care about? No. But here's Google growing their market space. So what comes out after Gmail? Uh, let's say Maps, which I think was probably next. Google Maps comes out next. And again, does Microsoft Word care? No. Does Microsoft Excel care? No. Google's still growing its market share. What does it come out with next? Let's put it in there. Google Docs. Some of you may have thrown Chrome in there, and that's fine. But then Google Docs comes out. And look what happens. Google Docs now actually is in the same market space as Word and Excel. But the thing about Docs is when it first comes out, how many features did it have? Well, let's tell you what, let's just play a little game on features, okay? And let's go through how many features, so the game is this, how many features in a week do you use in Microsoft Word? So I'll start you off with file open and file close. And what are some of the other examples you may have? So there's bold, underline, italics. Uh, did we have open and close? We did. So we have save, we have print, we have margins, we have, I'm going to have to put my pen down, we're going to have font, um, print preview. So now we're up to 10. Um, insert a table. What else might we do? Spell check, 12. I was thinking if there's any more that I would use in a week. Maybe a few tabs, maybe insert an image. But you see what's happening here? I haven't even gotten to 20 features that I need, and I'm already running out and struggling a little bit. How many features do you think are in Word 2013, or even Word for Windows 10? Well, if you pull down on every single menu, 
you would get about one and a half to two thousand features. This is almost the very definition of overshooting what the mainstream marketplace can use. It works very well for geeks, but you are overpaying. And when Docs came out, all it did was about 20 things, the 20 things I just listed. And so it underperformed what most people could use, but who was the underperformance for? Well, it was fine when it came to students and school kids. And so Docs was released pretty much into the educational market space where students just like you got to use an online word processing uh, environment that cost them nothing. And then Docs got better and better and better over time, and now it's got, I don't know how many features, maybe 200, which is still way less than 2,000, but no one needs 2,000 features, or very few people need 2,000 features. And here you have Google Docs now competing against Microsoft, and Microsoft has nothing that it can do except release Office 365 for free. And the problem with that is they have a massive infrastructure that has supported all this. They've got a lot of people, a lot of programmers, a lot of the marketing people. Google, it set this up and it was free when it first came out and it still is free. How does a company that sells a product for $139 have to start giving it away. How does it even survive doing that when it's not been building things all along for free? And that's the innovator's dilemma. It's really hard for Microsoft to pay attention to its best customers and see where it's going to get killed by a company like Google coming out with Search, coming out with Gmail, coming out with Maps, and then finally coming out with the app that's going to kill Microsoft there are, Microsoft's already too late to take on Google at this point. So here you go, the innovator's dilemma, perfectly explaining how Google is going to take on and wipe out Microsoft. Brilliant, brilliant theory, really well put together.